Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back. I just literally just started recording this and started talking about something totally different for like five minutes and realized I was rambling on about something that I should have addressed in the update video that I did not. So I'm recording this over this introduction once again. So um, let's let me just get to the point. Let me just get to the point. Um, Vinland Saga is getting really spicy and I already that is you know not many episodes left um for the season so but I'm glad about the direction that it's going right now as in you know Knut's balls is finally dropped and he's he's really stepping up. There's a lot of people that were upset about this to be honest. Um from I've seen some of the comments uh, um around on other people's reactions, you know what I'm saying like it was weird to me that people are like upset about this change from Canute. Like he went from this timid person to basically in one episode, um, one episode just becoming a total badass. But it's not really that Canute became a badass. I'm going to tell you guys why I believe that it was warranted what was happening and it was, it was foreshadowed. This was foreshadowed through, um, Ascalad. It was foreshadowed through him. And if you if you know anything about good storytelling, I'm going to explain it to you guys how they foreshadowed it, right? They introduced Canute. And if you guys remember, I'm going to show you how they use visual. They use visual to tell you that this guy is going to be important. Remember the first time I saw Canute? If you're watching my reactions, because that's the only thing I can really go off of. My initial instincts about this guy was he's going to be somebody important in the story if you remember my review if you saw my review on that episode the first time we saw him with the helmet and it didn't really show his face i'm like this guy is going to be a badass that is them doing visual that's why i was very surprised when they when they showed him and he was so he he looked like you know what i'm saying he looked like a girl he's very timid he's not talking you know what i'm saying he's being bit slapped around you know, you know what i'm saying and i'm like this guy is a prince something is wrong here this is what i'm like they use that to build his character if they didn't do that and they just off bat just made him just made him the the baddest then his character wouldn't have any depth going forward if he's going to be an important character it's just like thorkel thorkel it, it, thorkel is just he's a character but he's to the point where he's not necessarily super important to the story and that's what i'm saying if they had like we remember him fighting with thor in the first episode right we remember that but the, the biggest reveal was that he is actually they were foreshadowing it from before that that um that he's the grand uncle of thorfinn right the, the it, there was foreshadowing it but at the same time he was just a straight up badass from the get-go you get what i'm saying so if it tells me now that Canute is going to be an even better character than Thorkel. Why? Because they took time to build his character. They took time. They didn't just throw him at you. You get what I'm saying? He's like, in a sense, have go maybe even become a more important character than Thorfinn, which I don't think is going to happen because I think this is the story of Thorfinn, not Canute, but... I think Canute is going to be a very important character in the story going forward now. Now that they've taken time to build this character and they didn't just throw you at him. Just like they did with Thorfinn. They took time to build his character. He was a kid. Blah, blah, blah. And then they had a huge time skip. They show him losing his dad. Why he's with Askeladd. How he got there. How he grew up. Training. They took time to build his character during the story with visuals. With stuff that he went through you know what i'm saying um and being in the wild practicing you know over and over fighting against Askeladd and losing now he's coming back to save Askeladd because right now at this point in the story Askeladd is more of a dad to him than he probably even realizes but at the same time he's very stubborn i know that his eyes are blinded by um his eyes are blinded by revenge, but at the same time, he's he 
constantly is remembering what his dad is keep telling him that he can't live for revenge you get what i'm saying so at the same time maybe you're looking at it and saying he saved he saved them he came back to fight for him because nobody else gets to kill Askeladd but me but it also the bigger picture is that he came back to save Askeladd because he's that dad figure for him now no matter how you may look at it that is 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 his father figure right now so that's the bigger picture to me and what they're trying to foreshadow i don't think i think it's going to come to a point where is a two things are going to happen in this story i believe i believe that they're gonna grow old and he's gonna get older he's gonna get more badass ask lad is not going anywhere i don't think they're going to have a fight i think ask lad is probably going to die at some point and it's going to be devastating for thorfinn you know, and I think, or they're going to end up fighting and he's going to kill him and still be devastated. You get what I'm saying? You get what I'm saying? So I think it, it those two things, I think, is what going to happen in the story um, from how I see from the writing pers perspective, from how I see the story going. And I think they're doing a beautiful job of it. And as I said, it's not a surprise to me that Knut, and he's not really showing any, it's not fighting skills. It's more of growth, maturity with Knut, which they've been building up to. And I'm glad that he's gotten to the, to that point where we can look at him and be like, yeah, that's how a prince is supposed to act. No, you know what I'm saying? Now that he knows the truth about how his dad thinks about him. I don't know if it was Ragnar that told him about that or did he know all along? You know what I'm saying? So, um, you know, and Askeladd is such a badass, man. He's such a badass. And I'm looking forward to to um, to so much more from this. So let's go watch episode 20 and I'll see you guys right back here for the review. All right. So here we are. Episode 20. Insightful, to say the least. Um we know nothing huge was going to go down, but the implications of what went down when Knut was with the king, I mean, this anime is well written. And the reason why I'm saying that is because they take time to build up to certain things that you would not expect. You don't expect to the point of it slows the series down to a very crawly pace, but you enjoy it because the dialogue is so meaty. You know what I'm saying? And that's what I, I, I that's really what draws me to this anime so much is the dialogue. The dialogue is, is, is very good. You know, it's very, it's not super action heavy for the first season you know we got some action we got some cool stuff happening so far in the series very cool fights that we've seen but the dialogue man the dialogue is so is so good it's not boring so during those episodes you know three four stretch of episodes where it's just straight dialogue like in this episode there was no fights you know but the dialogue is so good the meeting between Knut and his dad, you know, the king, King Swain or whatever his name is, is just so good. It just gets you into it. You know what I'm saying? So even if you're not, if you're watching this anime for pure entertainment, like you're going to get those moments, but you also so get so engraved into the story, you feel like you're a part of it. You know what I'm saying? And you guys already know if you've been watching me for a while, you know how much I appreciate when stories are told like this. I I like the fact um, that they go out of their way to help you to understand what's really going on. Because there's a lot going on, even though you're not seeing a ton of, you know what I'm saying, a, t uh, um, a ton of side stories or this and that. You know, everything is pretty... St Thorfinn is going to be Thorfinn. You know what I'm saying? I expect nothing less. I, I expect nothing less of it when it comes on to what happened you know what i'm saying the way how he responded to canute and stuff like that like that's expected he's gonna he's gonna follow orders as long as he gets 
what he wants. He's going to follow orders, but he's never let you know that he's following your orders. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, you know, him and Knud have that understanding. And I think he's going to become Knud's, basically, they're going to be best buddies. You know, and that's how I see them going forward as in their relationship. Um, Askeladge, he just always wanted to see, to serve um, a great king. Um, if you want to put it as simplistic as that, it's more complicated than that. It, you know, it's a, it, it's, it's more complicated than that, but on a surface level that, you know what I'm saying? Like on, on a basic level, that's what he, he, you know, wants, you know what I'm saying? So he just wants to serve under a great, a great King. And he wants the right person to be in that position. And that's why he was trying to change Canute. He really wanted to see that because he, because he's like, I have a perfect specimen that I can turn into a great man. Why not? You know what I'm saying? So now he's in servitude. I'm pretty sure that if Canute, you know, acts out of character and do something stupid, ask Glad is going to knock him upside the head. Be like, what are you thinking? You know what I'm saying? So, um, it's, it's just one of those um, one of those relationships where it's going to blossom into something great, I believe so. So, Thorkel is always going to be Thorkel, but man, the king, he's not one to be taken lightly. I don't know how they're going to take him out. Um, I don't know if that's going to... I don't think it's going to happen by the end of this season, but they are having some plan in motion. Um, Ragnar's brother... Seems like Askeladd don't trust them, so we'll see what happens on that. And maybe he's, maybe he's going to be reporting to the king. Maybe, you know what I'm saying, maybe he's going to be a double agent. Who knows? But Askeladd doesn't trust him, so I don't think Knut is going to trust him either because I believe Askeladd is going to keep a close eye on him. So, yeah, man, I'm enjoying Vinland Saga. I'm pretty sure you guys are enjoying it too. Thank you guys so much for watching. This anime is really good. The storytelling is absolutely amazing. Um, and of course, they're doing an excellent job knocking out of the park with the animation in this anime. You know, the, the, the simple movement, the, the facial expressions, everything they're doing is just so, it's so good. And it, to expect nothing less um, from Wit Studio, because they also do Attack on Titan. So, I mean... <laughs> you know <laughs> anyways thank you guys so much man gratitude is never enough remember to subscribe if you're new also leave a like on this video and also leave a comment in the comment section let me know what you thought of this episode when you saw it and i will catch you guys next time peace